If you're having trouble getting into the Christmas spirit this year, let me tell you a story. It's inspiring, but also sobering. It was 80 degrees and breezy the evening of Saturday, December 18th, 2004, in Itaguaí, 52 miles outside Rio de Janeiro. State Deputy Antonio Albano Hayes, age 60, finished the pizza he'd ordered from his restaurant in Albanoel Country City Shopping Center and walked out. He probably took one last look at the decorations he put up that very day because he was so proud of them and because he loved Christmas so much. Then he started out on foot toward his home, less than a mile down the Rio Santos Highway, in the darkness and with cars passing him at a high rate of speed. He never arrived. At 11 p.m., the Federal Highway Police received an accident call. A body had been found by the side of BR-101. The experts from the Institute of Criminalistics who analyzed Hayes' body said from the fractures it looked like a hit-and-run accident, though it was impossible in the darkness to know if it was intentional. Jefferson Hayes, one of Albano's four children, wondered if his father had been murdered because he had received some threats over the phone. It was Albano's fifth consecutive term as state deputy, and he had run for mayor back in 1992 and again this year. This year, he'd lost again due to scarce political party representation among his voters. Jefferson offered 50,000 Brazilian reals, or $10,000, for information in the case. On Monday, detectives from the 50th police station in Itaguai analyzed evidence left behind at the scene. They found tire marks and then traced them to a Santana Quantum license plate LCE 6900, which had been set on fire in Serra do Pilatu and belonged to a boat mechanic, one Bogdan Stepergier, a Polish nationalized citizen of nearby Coroa Grande, age 61. Police found the rubber band from around his windshield with blood and hair evidence on it in Jabergier's backyard. He confessed to having hit Albano when he swerved onto the shoulder because a vehicle temporarily blinded him, coming from the opposite direction with its high beams on. They arrested him on charges of manslaughter and destruction of evidence in a crime. Albano Hayes was buried two days later. I mentioned before how Albano loved Christmas. I mean, he really did. He dressed as Santa Claus each Christmas Eve and gave gifts to the poor children and money to their parents in Quintino, a suburb of northern Rio. Then he went a thousand steps further when he created a free park centered around Christmas for the young Brazilians. I decided to keep a permanent Christmas in my life, explained Albano in one of his last interviews with TV Alegi. He planned to eventually expand the park to become the largest amusement park in Brazil, soon after the country city was opened. I assumed that was how he made money since the park was free. Neither the water park nor the replica of Christ the Redeemer he had planned to make, bigger than the one on top of Corcovado, would ever be completed. However, he did get a chance to blissfully observe the children, playing on his toys, slides, and pools from a hammock at his home near the back of his property. When he opened the park in 2000, he had families and full tour buses of children coming to spend the day. In an interview with BBC News Brazil in 2019, family friend and park employee Rodrigo Meirelles said of Albano Hayes. He used to say that he never had a Christmas when he was a child. Albano promised himself if he ever made something of himself, he would help other people in difficulty. He started nine child rehabilitation centers in the Rio area, though I could only find one still operating. Jefferson Hayes joined the BBC interview saying there were children who knew about Disney and insisted on stopping by Santa Claus's city. That made him very proud.
The park stayed open for two years following Albano's death. Then in 2006, the family had to close it for financial reasons. Nowadays, with the park in ruins, people come to take pictures for social media and play airsoft games. Then they go post bad things about the park. Rodrigo and the family make a little money off the pastry and sugar cane juice stand near the entrance, but most of what was in the park is now piled up in a shed at the back of the lot. Some Santas, most of the reindeer, the sleighs, giant candles, and many, many, many candy canes. A Jesus and Mary are sheltered against the back wall of the shed, protected from the destruction. At night, we lit everything up. It was so wonderful, said Rodrigo. And if you squint your eyes, you can see lights are still strung in the coconut trees, though they stopped working long ago. There's a huge hole in the hole of Noah's Ark, and only its king of the jungle is left, barely visible under a blanket of moss. Jefferson plans to make it wonderful again. He also owns the land across the road and has some projects in mind for it as well. He said, we are going to reopen the park and with our own resources, we will get on top in a short time. So here we are on the 18th anniversary of Albano's death, still hoping the park will live again and bring Christmas cheer to the hearts of the boys and girls who live in Rio Squalor. Because I'm confident that that's what would be on the Christmas wish list of the Santa Claus of Quintino. Merry Christmas to you and yours.